So, I mean, this is an amazing technological feat. What gives you the confidence that this is a solvable problem? And then why should Tesla be the one to solve this? Well, I, first of all, I think it's helpful to clarify with people. People think sometimes that I'm like a business person or finance person or something like that. I, I'm an engineer. I do engineering, always have. So I mean, I wrote software for like 15 years, 20 years. And I understand technology and software at quite a fundamental level. I know what we need to solve to make full self-driving feature complete. I think we've got an extremely good technical team. I, I, I think we really have the, the, the best people. It's an honor to work with them. I'm certain that we will get this done this year. So can I ask you about autopilot? So to what degree is consumer use of autopilot important in terms of furthering along the process? Because it seems like you know not every consumer is going to use it. It might vary person to person. Should you sort of incentivize people to use it, maybe auto-initiate? Is that even possible? Well, here, I think we're talking about quality of the data. Is that what you're talking about? The data that you're getting, because you can monitor all the data, but the quality with autopilot is superior, I would imagine. The advantage that we have that I think is very difficult to overcome is that we have just a vast amount of data on interventions. So effectively, the customers are training the system on how to drive. And there are millions of corner cases. They're so obscure and weird, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, there's, there's different road markings, different rules in different countries, different expectations. You've got rain, snow, sleet, hail, you know, hurricanes, floods, fires, smoke, <laughs> dust. It's insane. I know. But we've got cars in almost all, really in all those environments. And so we, every time somebody intervenes, takes over from autopilot, it saves that information on and uploads it to our system. We, we don't know which car it was or how, what happened. You know, there's no individual attribution for the car. We just know that that intervention took place. And then we see what is required to fix that intervention. And we're really starting to get quite good at not even requiring human labeling. Basically, the, the person, say, drives the intersection. We know then and is thereby training autopilot what to do. Right, right. Do you think one of the questions we debate a lot when we look at what uh, way happenings at, what is happening at Waymo and cruise automation is that it seems as though y the artificial intelligence or deep learning or deep reinforcement learning that you're l using you know is probabilistic they seem to be more deterministic in their approach and, uh, because we're just looking at what's going wrong there yes. and that's what that suggests is does that what you yeah, essentially, an heuristics approach to this uh, will result in a local maximum of capability, so not a global maximum. I think you really have to apply a sophisticated neural net to achieve a global maximum. And this is why the reliance on LIDAR is unwise. It, it gets you to a certain point, but no further. And so basically, a series of if-then-else statements in LIDAR is not going to solve it. Forget it. You're just game over. You have to solve v vision, perception, essentially understanding and with vision, and then it's solved. You don't need anything else. No other sensors at all. I mean, we drive cars with basically two cameras that aren't very good and on a gimbal that doesn't move very fast. <laughs> and a professional driver will almost, ne have, almost never have an accident. 